Lucky Land slots, you can get lucky just about anywhere. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to... Has anyone seen the bride and groom? Sorry, sorry, we're here. We were getting lucky in the limo and we lost track of time. No, Lucky Land Casino, with cash prizes that add up quicker than a guest registry. In that case, I pronounce you lucky. Play for free at LuckyLandSlots.com. Daily bonuses are waiting. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Hey all, welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. I'm your host, pharmacist Eric Christensen, and I thank you for uh, listening to this podcast today. Of course, you can reach me at uh, realliferpharmacology.com. Maybe uh, better is on LinkedIn, um, as well as uh, mededucation101 at gmail.com. Email and LinkedIn are probably the, the best ways. If you have any comments, questions, uh, suggestions uh, for the, the podcast, uh, definitely don't hesitate to reach out to me there. Uh, with that said, uh, let's cover the drug of the day today, and that is phosphomycin. Uh, brand name of this medication is Monural, and this drug is an antibiotic for infection. Uh, I will say I don't see this drug used terribly often. Uh, the most common use I have seen it used in is for patients who have an uncomplicated uh, urinary tract infection. So generally, uh, uncomplicated is defined as uh, female, non-pregnant, and essentially, you know, normal urinary function or urinary tract and anatomy. And that's kind of the, the generalized uh, definition of an uncomplicated uh, UTI there. Uh, with that said, it's, it's really important uh, with this drug, I think one of the, the most important things with the indication of urinary tract infe infection uh, is this drug really only is um, good or efficacious in the setting of uh, uncomplicated and or lower uh, urinary tract symptoms. So if you've got a patient that's potentially displaying uh, systemic uh, symptoms, maybe kind of borderline sepsis type symptoms, uh, and or, you know, maybe kidney pain, we, maybe we think it's a kidney infection, this drug is not going to work very well, and you're probably not going to want to select this medication uh, in that setting. So that is an important thing uh, to remember um, compared to some of the other antibiotics uh, like, a you know, ciprofloxacin or, um, you know, sulfamethoxazole trimethoprim, where they, they're going to have a little bit better efficacy in the setting of um, a urinary tract infection that might be um, getting into the systemic circulation and or uh, the kidney there. So definitely an important point to remember that if you're considering uh, using phosphomycin. Uh, this drug uh, comes as an oral packet, uh, three grams, and uniquely for uh, uncomplicated UTIs is a one-time dose. So that's definitely different and, and unique um, compared to some of the other agents, nitrofurantone or Bactrim, uh, that we use to, to treat UTIs. Uh, there is an IV product, uh, which I have never seen used, and I, I believe that uh, is only available in uh, Canada and, and some maybe some other countries as well. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I have obviously never seen it used personally um, within the, the United States where I'm uh, podcasting from. Mechanistically, how does phosphomycin work? Uh, so phosphomycin inhibits uh, bacterial cell wall synthesis, and it does that by blocking the action of pyruval transferase. Okay, So that's a, an important component, um, enzyme process uh, to bacterial cell wall formation, and ultimately uh, phosphomycin blocks that or inhibits that. Uh, one, so I mentioned the, the packet, and I think it's important to um, remember administration things, especially for something like this that's kind of unusual. Maybe you don't see it too often. So it's recommended to be mixed with cool water. So that's kind of a, a unique thing. You don't want to mix it with warm or hot water. It can be given with or without food. Um, and rarely or if it's desired to be used in pediatric patients uh, 
we may need to use a lower dose than three grams, which is the full packet. So uh, here's one of those situations where um, pharmacy math and, and calculations all come into play. So recognizing we've got you know a three gram packet, and if we put it in three to four ounces of water, let's pick uh, four ounces for simplicity's sake. If you put it in four ounces, which is approximately 120 mils, um, that's going to leave you, if I did my math right, with a concentration of 25 milligrams per mil. So then based off of that, depending upon the dose you're shooting for in a, in a patient, if you want to do something other than the three grams, um, you'll need to alter uh, the amount of, of mils uh, taken in after that, that mixture is, is made up there. So uh, hopefully that, that makes sense, but um, just stress wanted to stress the importance of being able to do calculations and, and getting a comfort level uh, with them for sure. Uh, adverse effect profile, uh, generally pretty well tolerated. I would say like most antibiotics, you know, GI upset, and diarrhea, nausea, those things can certainly happen with the, the medication there. Again, it's a one-time dose. So, you know, you're probably not going to do much about it if uh, that's encountered because you're only going to take it one time. Rarely uh, potential for hypersensitivity reactions. And then, you know, if we've got a patient uh, that we're using it for prophylaxis or they're on it quite a bit for some odd reason, um, certainly we've got to uh, think about the risk of uh, C. diff infections, diarrhea, uh, things like that. So uh, those are a few of the adverse effects. I would say overall, generally pretty well tolerated. Kinetics. Uh, kinetics are important to remember. So this drug needs to um, get into the urine to have its action um, of blocking that bacterial cell wall synthesis. So from a kinetic standpoint, this drug is uh, gets into the urine actually unchanged and it's about uh, 30 to 40 percent of the drug uh, gets there unchanged and, and then obviously has uh, the action of helping to uh, kill bacteria. Now, in patients with poor renal function, which is oftentimes a lot of my patients in uh, geriatrics, we've got to remember that that can increase the half-life. So basically, more of it will hang around in systemic circulation for longer. However, because of that, we do get lower concentrations to the site of action, which is, you know, out through the kidney and into the urine bladder area. So we can have lower concentrations uh, in the bladder area, which is the site that we're trying to treat the infection. Uh, so that does potentially present a problem. So patients with poor renal function, we've got to keep an eye out for uh, maybe an increase in systemic toxicity and the possibility as that kidney function gets worse that there is the chance we could have less efficacy uh, as as well there. So, and, you know, cutoffs uh, in, in the literature reported, I think it was, uh, you know, between 50 and 60 mils or less. Um, you may start to see less of that drug um, secreted or concentrated into the urine uh, to have its antibacterial effects there. Uh, just quickly speaking, you know, just a, a reminder on urinary tract infections and the common bugs that cause urinary tract infections. So gram negatives are, are overwhelmingly the most common cause. There are a few gram positives, um, but phosphomycin has activity against definitely the majority of those gram negative bugs. So uh, E. coli, uh, Proteus, Klebsiella, Serratia, and it also, I believe, has some activity against gram positive bacteria as well, certain gram positives like um, Enterococcus, for example. Okay, so it, it does definitely have that spectrum of activity um, of the most common um, UTI causes, and E. coli is uh, the number one bacterial cause of urinary tract infections, of course. Okay, so let's take a quick break, and I will finish up on drug interactions. If you're in the market for pharmacist board certification study material like pharmacotherapy, ambulatory care, uh, geriatrics, medication therapy exam, 
medication therapy management exam, definitely go check out meded101.com slash store. Uh, in addition, if you're taking the NAPLEX soon, we've also got resources for that over at rxgrad.com as well. So all those links at meded101.com slash store. Uh, as I get into drug interactions here, I definitely want to remind you about my uh, recent drug interaction book as well as my food drug interaction book uh, that have recently been released within the last uh, six months to year here. So definitely go check those out. I'll have those links on meded101.com slash store. Uh, the drug interaction book is also available as an audible book. Um, so you can get that for free if you've never tried an audible book as well. And again, all those links at meded101.com slash store. All right, so finishing up on those drug interactions. So one really nice thing about phosphomycin is there's not a lot of interactions. Um, you know, no CYP3A4, uh, you know, sip 2 d 6 none of that. So that is really, really nice and, and convenient. Uh, there's a few interactions as far as unique vaccines and potentially blunting uh, the effects or the response to that vaccine, like cholera and, and typhoid. Um, also, um, drugs that speed up the gut, so prokinetic agents, as they're sometimes called, uh, so a drug like metoclopramide, for example, um, that may actually uh, reduce absorption, which could ultimately you know, reduce the amount of drug that's getting to the site of action and reduce effectiveness. And one last one, um, I do see patients taking probiotics uh, on occasion. Um, if you think about you know, antibacterial activity, and using probiotics, that's what we're trying to do, is to provide the, the body with uh, those good bacteria. Um, certainly giving an antibiotic uh, can you know, alter, diminish the effects uh, from, from probiotics. So, and you know, I'd, I'd make the argument that you know, the benefit of probiotics is a, a little bit controversial. It depends upon you know, what you're treating or what you're trying to do with that, of course. But um, it is important to note if a patient has... Uh, really felt like they've benefited from probiotics, that um, antibiotic or phosphomycin in this case, as we're talking about, um, could potentially um, alter that effectiveness of that medication. So again, pretty um, low risk in general compared to other medications on the uh, drug interaction profile. All right, so that wraps it up for today. Uh, go to reallifepharmacology.com get the free top 200 drug study guide uh, of no cost to you uh, whatsoever, simply for subscribing uh, to the podcast. Uh, we also shoot you out emails as far as when we've got uh, new content available, such as, as the podcast today. Uh, if you enjoyed the podcast, uh, do us a big favor, leave us a rating review on iTunes or wherever you're listening. That's greatly appreciated. Again, if you want to reach out to me, LinkedIn, uh, or mededucation101 at gmail.com. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, uh, you know, any questions about you know, study materials, anything like that, um, feel free to uh, track me down, certainly. So I'm going to sign off for today. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great rest of your day. Okay, round two. Name something that's not boring. A laundry? Ooh, a book club! Computer solitaire, huh? Ah, oh, sorry. We were looking for Chumba Casino. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. That's right. Chumbacasino.com has over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. Ch -ch -ch -chumba. Chumbacasino.com. No purchase necessary. Forward, by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.